Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 4, Chemical Bonding. And now we're going to focus on the subtopic of 4.1, the Lewis Structure, part 2 of the video. So in this video, we're going to learn on how to describe the formation of the following bond using the Lewis dot symbol. So first, we're going to have the formation of the ionic or electrovalent bond. Second, we have the covalent bond. And third, we have the dative coordinate bond. Next, we're going to learn on how to draw the Lewis structure of the covalent species with a single, double, or triple bond. Last and not least, we're going to compare the bond length as well as the bond strength between the single, double, and triple bond. So the learning outcome of C, D, and E, we're going to cover that in part 2 of the video, which is in this video. So without any further ado, let us start. So ionic bond. Ionic bond consists of the electrostatic force of attraction between the positively and negatively charged ion in an ionic compound. In the formation of the ionic compound, we need to have the metal element as well as the non-metal element. So the metal element will act as the electron donating group in which you're going to donate electron in order to form a cation. Meanwhile, for the non-metal, it's going to receive electron and this at the end is going to form an anion. So it is a transfer between a more, more electropositive atom to the more electronegative atom, which is the non-metal. And the number of electron gain or loss will be the charge of the ion form. So as what you can see here, uh, let's say for the formation of NaCl, Na, which is in group 1, will have one valence electron. Cl, which have a seven valence electron, will need to, will need to have one electron from the sodium in order to achieve a stable octet arrangement. So one electron from the sodium will be transferred to the chlorine atom, and this is going to form a sodium cation as well as the chloride anion. So you can present it in terms of this way, or you can also put it in terms of the Na plus bracket here, as well as the Cl minus, which have eight valence electron all together. Similarly, for magnesium oxide, so magnesium has two valence electron, and oxygen will have six valence electron. So two of the valence electron from magnesium need to be transferred to the oxygen. So one of the electron is going to be transferred to this side, and one of the electron from the magnesium to going to be transferred to this side. So there's going to be addition of this electron as well as this electron here. So it's going to have eight valence electron altogether, and this is going to form a stable um, octet arrangement. So you can put it in terms of this way, or you can also put it in terms of like this, where you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're going to carry a magnesium two plus and O2 minus. Okay. And you can also form calcium dichloride, where you have one atom of calcium and two atoms of chlorine. So it has seven valence electron here, and then it has seven valence electron here. But for calcium, it has two valence electron. So one of these is going to be transferred to here, and one of these electron is going to be transferred to there. Okay, so one of these is going to be here, and the other one is going to be there. So you're going to form eight valence electron, similarly to here, which is eight valence electron. So it's going to form an octet electron arrangement, or you can put it as two chloride ions with eight valence electron surrounding it. Okay, and two times one is going to have negative two, and then it's going to have plus two here. So the charge here is going to be neutral. And this is how we're going to form the ionic or the electrovalent bond. Now we're going to move on to the covalent bond. So for the covalent bond, if the atom have similar tendency to attract electron, or for the atom would have a similar electronegativity, we can say that they do not react with each other by transferring electron. What they're going to do is that they're going to share electron so that the stable electronic configuration of the noble gases can be obtained. So this happens involving their non-metal atom. For example, the fluorine gas. So it consists of 
two fluorine atom. So let's say if you have a fluorine atom here and another fluorine atom here, which have seven valence electron and seven valence electron here, they're not going to be a transfer of electron. What they're going to do is they're going to share um, their valence electron together, okay, in order to form eight electrons on each side so that they are stable. And this can also be represented in terms of the single bond here, where the single bond here representing two electrons. Okay, so they're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then they, because they share two electrons, it's going to become eight. Similarly, on the other side here. So this overlapping here, one and two here, representing a single bond. Okay, and this pair here is representing lone pairs of electrons, similarly to here. So this is known as lone pair. Two electrons together is known as the lone pair. Meanwhile, the single bond here is known as the single covalent bond. Okay, now we're going to look into the formation of the single bond, double bond, as well as the triple bond. So the, the single bond can be formed when the two atoms share one pair of electrons together. So as what you can see here, this blue color electron will share electron with oxygen with the red color here. So when they are together and on the right hand side as well, what you can see that these two electrons can form a single bond. Similarly to this side here, blue color and the red color, one single, one single bond. And this long pair gonna still be the same. So you can you can put it in terms of this way, or you can put it in terms of this way, where this is the more popular way of writing the Lewis structure of the covalent bond. Okay, and this representing a single covalent bond. Meanwhile, for the double bond, it happens when we share two electrons on this side. And on the right hand side here. So, as what you can see here, the red color and the blue color join together to form a single bond. The red color and the blue color will join together to form a single bond. Similarly, on the right hand side, blue and red single bond, blue and red single bond. So, it's going to look something like this, where it's going to become a carbon dioxide in which it has double bond on both right hand side and the left-hand side of the central atom carbon, okay, in which it happens when it share two electrons together. Okay, so like this, and oxygen will be like this. And that is why the double bond can be formed. Okay, and now for the triple bond, it happens when the nitrogen arrange the electron free to be like this, and another nitrogen atom arrange its three electron to be like this. So what they're going to form is one single bond, two single bond, and three single bond. Or this is known as the triple bond. Okay. So this is going to form one bond, one bond, and another bond. And this can also be represented as a triple bond here. And this, we can compare that in terms of its length as well as its strength. So, bond length are basically the distance between the nuclei of the two bonded atoms. And as what you can see here, the triple bond is going to be the shortest in length. And they're going to have the strongest bond. Okay, shortest in length, but the strongest, the highest strength. Okay, because they are pulled more strongly towards one another in comparison to single bond, where they are appear to be longer, but they are weaker. And for this one, they are shorter and stronger, hence more energy is needed to break the carbon-carbon triple bond. Okay. Now we're going to look into the last type of the bond, which is the coordinate covalent bond, or known as the dative bond. So, coordinate covalent bond can be formed when one atom provides two electrons which are then shared with another atom. So, this happens 
when the donor atom has the lone pair of electron, and the accepted atom must have empty orbital or the unfilled orbital to accommodate the two electrons from the donor atom. And this bond is represented by an arrow from the donor atom to the accepted atom. And the formation of the dative bond will have the similar properties as the normal covalent bond in terms of the bond strength as well as the bond length. For example, if we have the hydrozonium ion here, which is the H3O plus. So hydrozonium ion can be formed when we have the H plus ion as well as the water molecule. So the water molecule will have two lone pair here. Okay, and because it has lone pair electron, then the water molecule here is going to become the donor atom. Meanwhile, donor atom or donor molecule. Meanwhile, for the hydrogen plus ion, it's going to become the acceptor because it has empty orbital or unfilled orbital. Okay? Because you know that hydrogen atom will have one electron. So it has a configuration of 1s1. But now, it become H plus. So what they're going to do is it's going to donate one electron that they have and hence it's going to become one S0. So it have an empty orbital. Okay, so when you have extra, which is donor, and you have empty, you can donate the two electron to the H plus acceptor atom here. So what they're going to do is they're going to form a bond in between the water molecule as well as the acceptor atom. So you can put it this way, or you can also put it in terms of the arrow. So arrow from the donor atom to the acceptor atom. And this is where the bond is being formed. And as a result, they're going to carry a positively charged ion in order to present the hydrozonium ion here. Okay? And this can also happen when the donor atom has the lone pair electron, for example, in the case of ammonia here. So for ammonia, it has a lone pair electron. And for the acceptor atom or acceptor molecule, this boron here will have an unfilled orbital. Okay? So, because the boron here will only have six electrons surrounding it. Two electrons from here, two electrons from here, and then two electrons from here. But in order to be stable, it needs eight electrons. So, what they're going to do is that the nitrogen is going to transfer the two electrons to the boron in order to make it from six to four, six surrounding it to become it. And as a result, a dative coordinate bond is going to be formed. Okay? And you're going to learn here in the next subtopic about the idea of incomplete octet. Okay? So this incomplete octet means that it has less than 8 electrons. And that is why it can receive 2 electrons from the nitrogen in order to become a coordinate covalent bond. Alright? So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!